Hello friends and new friends. Welcome to this crochet tutorial on how to make fingerless gloves. We will be using the same yarn that we used to make the infinity hooded scarf with ties. And that yarn that we used is called Parfait Layers. It is from Premier Yarns. It is super soft and as I said before if you rub it on your cheek you are going to love the feel of this. It's super soft and it is very easy to work with. This yarn is a bulky size 5 and the color that I'm using here is called sweet and spicy. All right. So, what we're also going to be using is a size K 10 and a half hook. Um I guess that's a 10 millimeter. I'm not really sure cuz on the back it says the exact same thing. So, I'm not sure. Uh, a tapestry needle and a pair of scissors. This is my first glove and I will show you how to make this. As you can tell it's not completed but it is a very simple design. Um, I am going to confess <laughs> I tied my colors in I wanted particular colors to make it a particular way. So I chose pink and the print and you'll see here this is gray and that's going to be for my cuff. The way that this works is that the thumb hole is right here so the inside will be where the seam is and as it comes around it fits like so. Okay, These glo fingerless gloves are made to fit your hand or if you're making it as a gift, if you can get the measurements, I'll show you how, um, for a friend. Okay, So the actual glove measures from just below your knuckle here, so just above this right here, just a little tiny bit to your wrist and and it also measures around the width of your hand you want it to be kind of loose not tight so in order to achieve this <laughs> I cheated <laughs> I know it doesn't go with the idea of the yarn but because it's so small I created a small amount for what I wanted to do. Now if you choose to just pull it from the skein and whatever is there, um, I encourage you to do that as well. Me, I kinda forced the colors to control it the way I have done it so that I have a split right here in the middle. One thing I wanted to show you about the band for our yarn here is this is a nice hard band. I didn't notice it until after I had used my first skein, but it has a ruler on the inside set up for inches, and I'm from United States so we use inches. I'm sorry if if those who watch this video it does not have the metrics. So I wanted to point this out to you if you do choose to use it there is a ruler in here. So I wanted to show you how to measure. Okay, we're going to Whoops. 
seems like it wants to play games with me. So we want to measure just below that knuckle on your middle finger to just about the, the wrist. So mine looks like it's about four and a half, five-ish. So I have here just about five inches. And then you want to measure around here so and you want it loose so if you can stick your finger underneath that tape measure to give yourself so that when you bend you don't stretch the stitches out I have here about seven and a half inches and that's what I have here so that's how we will measure for this now if you come here and try to measure your wrist um, that will also be helpful but you can see here my wrist with a finger in it measures about seven and a half but we're going to go a little bit bigger because we're going to use a ribbing and if you're familiar with ribbing which is a very simple um, front and back post double crochet it will pull it in and kind of act like an elastic but when we get to that point I'll show you how to do that as well so let's get started we're going to pull up our crochet hook and I'm going to start with my pink yarn um, you'll be making two of these well not <laughs> you'll be making two of these before we move on to the next step so since I already have mine made I'll show you how to make one that you'll need and then we'll move on to the next step so let's begin our tutorial we do not need a long tail we're just going to make a short little tail and place a slip knot onto our hook now if the measurements that you have for your hand is similar to mine then you will be following and doing the same things that I'm doing. If your hands are a little longer then you will add a few more stitches. If your hands are a little bit shorter then you'll be using less stitches. And when it comes time to do our thumb hole I'll give you some suggestions of what you'll need to do at that time. So let's go ahead and start with a chain of 13. 1, 2, 3. Continue till you get to 13 and I'll meet you there. Please pause your video. Now before we move on I would like for you to encourage you to pull a little bit of extra yarn from your ball or from your cake to make it easier to place these stitches in. Now the um, fingerless gloves for this section will all be in half double crochet. So to make a half double crochet I will show you in just a second but first we need to find where to place our first stitch. The one on the hook is not considered a complete stitch. The completed stitch is one here, one here, and so on. So in the second stitch from your hook, so we have one and then two, we're going to place our first half double crochet. <clears throat> so to make a half double crochet, place your finger on top of the loop, yarn over, and in the second chain, go ahead and place, insert the hook, and then bring up a loop. You now have three loops on your hook so yarn over and pull through all three and you have completed your first half double crochet. Let's do our second one. Yarn over and into the second or the third chain basically. <laughs> pull pull up a loop 
and then yarn over and through all three. Alright, so continue on to the end. Double check your count. Make sure that you have placed 12 half double crochets and I'll meet you there. Please pause your video. So have you been tempted <laughs> to rub this on your cheek? I have been. <laughs> this is so soft. Okay, so at the end of the row we have 12. We want to chain one and then turn our work. Now for the next two rows we're going to be doing the same thing. Uh, we're going to place a half double crochet in each one of the uh, stitches from the previous row. So we're going to do this for two rows. Okay, we've completed number one. This is number two. At the end of number two, chain one turn and do number three and I'll meet you there. So we've completed three rows at that end. Make sure to chain one and turn your work. So we're going to place five half double crochets at the beginning of this row in those first five stitches. And this row we're going to create our thumb opening. Now if you have a longer uh, measurement that you need then you may want to do um, six or seven. And if you have a shorter one you may want to do um, three or four but at the bottom of your thumb you need to have at least three stitches that will help with the for the wrist because um, I've made these gloves before if you only have like one or two stitches it kinda um, doesn't make the, the thumb hole fit properly so um, back to the size that I'm working on we need five half double crochets. Now for my thumb opening um, I'm chaining four. One, two, three, four. And we're going to skip four stitches. So in the fifth stitch we'll place our half double crochet. There's one and that will leave us with two more that we need to place in. Alright, and let's chain one and turn. So here's our thumb hole opening. Now this row, you may think, oh my gosh, how are we going to do this? <laughs> it's okay. Let's do it step by step. So let's do our first three half double crochets. One, two, and three. And this will also include part of that chain a little bit. So I try to pick up two parts of the chain, but it's okay. It's you know when you're going in the opposite direction it always seems to do just a little bit different okay so we got our three there okay so you want to do it in part of the chain not wrap around it but just you want to keep it using as if it was the very first row so one there's two Here's three, and here's four, and that's going to kind of go around that stitch right there. Okay, so that means so far we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so we need five left, eight, 
nine ten see I have two spaces left eleven and twelve and you want to make sure that you pick up the two where's the other one it's over here here we go there we go and chain one and this will, will turn so this is what we have so far I hope it was uh, an easy explanation for you um, you know we went into our first stitch and our second stitch but because it's on the back side your stitch for this half double crochet is actually over here that's why it seemed odd that you were going straight into the chain and then we did our chain and then our five stitches left <laughs> it seems confusing but it's okay <laughs> so we got the one row here now so that mine will match this one we have one two three so here's one after the thumb hole so I need two more rows of pink and then I'm going to change colors to um, to make mine match so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do my uh, row six and row seven but when I get to the end of row seven and I'm going to change colors I'm gonna pick up there and show you how to do that so go ahead and do row six chain one turn row seven when you get to number eleven half double crochet stop there and we'll start the video again and I'll show you how to change colors with the half double crochet so I'm ready to do stitch number twelve so we want to yarn over we want to pick up our stitch and bring up a loop so you have the three on your hook now we're going to make our color change so go ahead and if you're using the pink like I am go ahead and drop that pick up your second color and make it with a small tail not very long and then just place it over your hook and pull it through that's completing that stitch and then chain one and place your hook down <laughs> so let's go ahead and tie this up so it doesn't come untangled uh, with the scissors go ahead and cut the pink and then we're going to just make a small square knot right over left and left over right and that secures that to complete the the rest of this um, fingerless glove you notice mine is still here we're going to do seven rows of the second color and when you get to the end you're going to need a tail you'll notice here that my tail is is really long and this will be used to sew it into a a tube like this so go ahead and do seven rows remember to chain one and turn and at the end leave a tail of approximately 20 inches and when we get to that point we'll be ready to to move on um, I also encourage you before you restart your video uh, go ahead and make a second one so that way we can do both of them at the same time so go ahead and pause your video and I'll see you in a few minutes so here I am at the end of my seven rows of my second color and I wanted to remind you about our tail make it quite a bit long and then come on in and cut it and take your last loop do not chain one 
and then just pull it through and then tighten it. Okay, this will be used, this string right here will be used to sew this. So let's get out our tapestry needle and we'll start showing how to sew these together. I placed these like this on purpose. This is wrong, okay? You see how our small amount here for our thumb is here and our fingers are up here. We need to flip this. Okay, so both the three half double crochets line up with these three half double crochets. So, what we're going to do is take one and flip it and take the other one and flip it. And then with our well, <laughs> let's flip it there. Thread our needle okay, and then we're just going to do like a basic whip stitch. So we're going to go through one stitch and through the next stitch okay all the way down to the bottom here something I had thought of that I didn't say is as you're sewing this down make sure your whip stitch is not tight if it's tight it will cause it to draw in so when you bring it around just enough so that it's snug and then um, start your next stitch okay so here's here's mine I'm gonna do my second one after I finish this when you when you get down here to the end wrap it twice do not cut your yarn I'll show you what we're going to do with our tail at that time I wanted to point out that down here at the bottom to make sure that you place that extra stitch just so that you have two wraps here okay so let's move on to our cuffs and what we're going to do with the leftover of our tail we're going to go ahead and cut it off give us about three inches on each one and we are ready to start our cuffs okay so I would like for you to go back to where your thumb opening is here and you notice that you have the three half double crochets that's the side that your cuff is going to be on but for those like me <laughs> who created our ends at the opposite side we're going to place a uh, like one row around here or you can do the opposite thing and we can weave these stitches down in if you like to weave these stitches back in let me show you what to do just go ahead and load your needle up and then to the inside we're going to pick up the back of the half double crochet in the center of the stitch, go down about four stitches, and pull it through, and then stretch it just a little bit, and then go over that first stitch, go over that one, and under the rest, and then come right on up. So I'm sorry if there was uh, an inconsistency there. And then you go ahead and you cut this right there. Okay. And then we'll do this to the other side. 
Now, for those of you that would like to add an edging along here, I would like to show you what to do. In this case, I'm going to use gray. You make a small tail, place a slip knot on your hook, and we're going to start with a standing single crochet. And in any stitch, oh, let's double check, make sure you have the five half double crochets. That will mean this is the top. It'll be right here on your fingers. Okay? So you can start with any stitch at the top, and we're going to start with that standing single crochet. Okay? And then as you go around, you place a single crochet, kind of like the same distance apart. Okay, and you will continue this all the way around, and then you'll end with a slip stitch, and then weave your ends in. All right, let's move on to our cuff. To begin our cuffs, we're going to start with a small tail and place a slip knot on our hook. And remember to count your half double crochets, one, two, three, and this is the edge that we're placing our cuff on. Now you can start pretty much anywhere on here. Uh, I'm going to start just below my thumb hole, and what we're going to do is we're going to start with a standing double crochet. So to do that, place your finger on your loop, yarn over, and pick up a stitch, and pull up a loop, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. That completes a standing half double crochet. And let's move on. Now, you're thinking that maybe you need to add one or two per row. In this case, we're going to be adding like two, one, two, one. It will seem like a lot of stitches, but it will work out just fine because of the stitching that we're going to be using for the ribbing, it will cause it to pull in. So for one row, you'll do one stitch, and for one row, you'll do two. So here I did two, now I'm going to do one. Right here, where my pieces are joined, I'm going to do one, But to make doubly sure, I'm going to go ahead and go through one here as well as one on the other side. And that'll help secure that stitching that we did very well. So that's two. So the next row, we're going to do one. Okay, continue that all the way around two, one, two, one, and I'll meet you back here. All right, I have placed 22 double crochets around. Now let's go ahead and join with a slip stitch and chain one. Okay, this is where we're going to do our front posts and back posts to create the ribbing that's needed for our glove. To do a front post, these are front post double crochets, yarn over. When a completed double crochet is made, it is known as a post. So we're going to go back behind it and come up on the other side of it and then we're going to take our yarn and go over and bring it back the way that that hook went. So now you have three loops on the hook and we're going to complete it 
as if it was a double crochet. Okay, you have completed a front post double crochet. Now to do a back post, basically the same thing, but we're going to go to the back side of the post. So we're going to come behind and go through the one side, take the, the hook, go back to the other side, bring the yarn over, and the hook will take the yarn where it needs to go. And then we're completing our double crochet. So now we have a back post, front and back. Let's do it again. Yarn over. We're on the front side of our post. We're going to go behind and come up to the other side of it. We're going to take our yarn, go over our hook, and our hook is going to bring it back. And then yarn over through two, yarn over through two. Okay, can you kind of see the ribbing effect now? This one's in the back and this one's in the front. So let's do the back one. We're going to go from behind and come up and go over that post and then let the hook bring the yarn back around. Okay? And then yarn over through two, yarn over and through two. And you can see our ribbing effect already. So continue all the way around until you get to that uh, chain one area, but you're not going to slip stitch there. You're going to slip stitch to the top of the front post. I'll meet you there. Take your time. If you don't understand it, go back over the video and watch how it's done again. Go ahead and pause your video. So here we are at the end of the row. You'll notice that the back post double crochet finishes our row. So we want to slip stitch into the top of that front post and then chain one. The reason why I chain one is to kind of hide that stitch um, in between all these other stitches. Okay, so now we're going to, our next row will be exactly the same front post and back post. Now I'm going to do four rows in total. Um, you can do however many rows you would like um, if you want to make it longer or just keep it so that it's at a comfortable for your wrist. So continue on. I'm going to do two more rows and then I'll show you what mine looks like finished. I hope your journey on making these cuffs was a pleasant one. Here I am at the end. I have completed four rows. I'm going to place my slip stitch at the top of the, um, the stitch here and I've cut myself a tail and I'm going to pull it through. Okay. So to weave in the ends, you're going to want to turn it inside out and what I'm choosing to do is to go up and down because if you go around here, it may cause it to not stretch the way you need it. So I'm going to go on these back posts right here. Okay, and then remember to skip over that first one and then go down through the rest, kind of weaving in and out. Alright, stretch it just a little, cut it close, and you'll do the same thing for the other one. So I hope you enjoyed this journey of making these fingerless gloves. Of course here's our thumb opening. They are super 
super soft. It's not like using some of these other worsted weight yarns. This yarn is amazing. I can't imagine what it would be like in a blanket. You would never want to get out from underneath it. <laughs> so, here I got both of my gloves on. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I am thankful that you have joined me and I hope you make a pair. I hope you feel the softness of this wonderful yarn made by Premier. And uh, I hope your winter doesn't feel as cold with these super soft and warm gloves on. Please pet come back again. We will be making the hat that's using the same yarn. And then I will show you what it's like to have the gloves, the hat, and the infinity hooded uh, scarf that ties all together as a set. Until then, bye-bye.